know too much about it. He's laid away for me. He's laid away for you. He is a way maker. Let's go to St. John, the 14th chapter. Thank you, Lord. We just got to trust and never doubt. And he will surely, surely bring us out. I do want to God who's head of my life to Minister Maria, Mother Teresa, to Ashley. God is good, Sister Pamela. God is a good God, and he is a way maker. When there seem to be no way, God will make a way. St. John 14, verses 1 through 7 says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. And with I go ye know, and the way you know. Yeah. Thomas saith unto him, they called him later on down Thomas, yeah. but Thomas saith unto him, Lord, yeah. we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Yeah. Jesus yeah. saith unto him, I yeah. am the way, am the truth, the way. and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. You know, Jesus made a way before he became the carnate Christ born of the Virgin Mary. Jesus was there all the time. In the beginning, when God said, let there be light and there was light. That was the word, and we know St. John 1 lets us know the word became flesh yeah, and yeah. dwelt among yeah. us. Yeah. So he has made a way for us, and he made a way for the Israelites. Let's go to Exodus. Look at Exodus, I think I'm going to the 14th chapter there. Exodus 14, 13. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, yeah. and ye shall hold your peace. Yeah. And that's what we have to do now. We don't have to fight our own battles. Stand still and let the Lord fight your battle. He shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. But lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thine hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. God made a way. And they, they were facing, the enemy was behind them, the Red Sea was in front of them. But God made a way through the Red Sea. They passed over on dry land. And when Pharaoh's host came after into it, the waters came in and swallowed them up. But God made a way for them. And that's the same God that we serve today. He will make a way where there seems to be no way. Let's go to Hebrews 10. That's why we can't lose heart. I thought about this morning, you know, that it, it, while it's not comical, but in a way, I know after God blesses, then the devil gets busy. Okay. Okay? So I was not surprised, but I'm like the Apostle Paul. None of these things move me. Okay? In the Old Testament, before the death,
day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost would just come upon people yeah, yeah, to yeah. empower them yeah. to do a service or whatever they had to do for the Lord. But as of the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost comes and he dwells on the yeah. inside yeah. of yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. We know Elijah was a great prophet. Wow. But after he had his greatest victory, killed all, right. all those false prophets of Baal, he got afraid because Jezebel sent out the word that he was going to be like those slain prophets of hers that he had slain. Mm -hmm. Elijah took off on the run yeah. and went hiding out. And God had to tell him, what you doing here? Yeah. Well, he, well, see, we as people of God with the Holy Ghost on the inside of us, we shouldn't take off running yeah. after God is blessed because yeah. the devil throws some mess. We have to be like yeah. the Apostle Paul and say none of these oh, things oh. move me. We're talking yeah. about Elijah. So let's go to 1 Kings 17. But God is a way maker. Yeah. 1 Kings 17. 1 Kings 17. And we're going to talk about how God made a way for this widow. Beginning at verse 8. And the word of the Lord came to him saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain me. God took care of Elijah. And verses preceding that, after he told Ahab it wasn't going to rain for three years, and it will rain again at his word. Then he went away and he hid himself again by the brook Cherith. Okay, and the ravens came and fed him. Then he prepared this widow woman to feed him. God is a way maker. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a pan full of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise or in a jar. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. Right. Uh -huh. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first. And bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. Right. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he, and her house did eat many days. If she had not listened to the prophet, she and her son probably would have died. Okay? And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. Sometimes you got to give to get. Okay? You don't give to the Lord just because, Lord, I, I, I want something from you, so I'm going to give. But we are to give willingly. Yeah, yeah. And when you give, the scripture says, give and it shall be given unto you. Yeah. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. Thank you. But if you close your hands tight, and you don't give or whatever, then you're not going to receive. That's it, that's it. But we have to give with the right motives. Yeah, yeah. She gave out of obedience yeah. to what the prophet told her. 
Now, we have to be discerning people of God. There are some people asking for your money. They are just trying to fleece you. Okay? But if you bless the men, the women of God that God has set over you, if you bless them, you're going to be blessed. Okay? And I'm like the Apostle Paul. Not that I speak in respect of want. That's Philippians, the fourth chapter. He said, for I have learned how to be obeyed. Yeah. I've learned how to abound. I've learned how to suffer need. You know, yeah. so whatever state you're in, we have to learn how to be content. Okay. But you have to give, and God will give you some more to give. Yeah, the yeah. song that says, and that was St. Luke 6, 38, that I quoted about give, and it shall be given unto yeah. you. But we have to do it willingly yeah. and not grudgingly because the Bible says God loves a cheerful yeah. giver. So there's a song that says you can't be God-given mm -hmm. no matter how mm -hmm. you try. Mm -hmm. Now there's some controversy now about tithing. Okay? Mm -hmm. Some have been teaching tithing for years. And one person in particular is now saying that was wrong because it was manipulating people. No, no. If you give your 10% tithe and you give offerings, you will be blessed. Okay, it depends on how someone uses those scriptures. You don't make people feel guilty, you know, if they don't give, you know, you're on a guilt trip or whatever, but you encourage people to give because you know that's God's way of getting a blessing to you, okay? Under the law that we are not under, okay? The 10% tithe, we're not under that, but if you do it, you will be blessed. Oh, yeah. And okay. Jesus said, and I heard Pastor Joseph Prince dealing with that, Jesus dealt with those Pharisees about how they were so strict about fasting and their times and all this, but they had left out judgment and mercy and so forth. He told them you all to do the one and not be the other undone. It is still a good thing because God, let's go to 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. But he's a way maker. But we've got to do our part. Oh, yeah. How, how many of us know faith without works is dead? Dead, killed up. 2 Corinthians 9. And Paul loved the Corinthian church. You know, sometimes I mention about how the Corinthian church, they were spoiled. Paul spoiled them, and then the Lord let me know he loved them. Okay, and he taught them about what they should be doing for him, but he didn't require them to do it because they were too immature to receive what he was asking them to do. Second Corinthians 9 says, As it is written, he have dispersed abroad, he have given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministers seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Let me see if that's really what I'm on. Nine, six through nine, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna back up. Verse six says, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man, according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Yeah. And God is able we're talking about he's a way maker, right? Yeah. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always having all sufficiency and all things may abound to every good work. 
Okay, and the older saints used to say, if you didn't pay your tithe, God don't get his money. God don't need our money. He just wants to bless us. The scripture says, God says, the silver is mine. The gold is mine. The cattle on a thousand hills belong to him. He said, if I were hungry, I wouldn't even tell you. But that's God's way of blessing us. Give unto the Lord, and he will give some more to give. And if you go to uh, 2 Corinthians 11, and verses 7 through 8. And again, he's, this is to the church at Corinth. He told them in verse 7, chapter 11, verse 7. He said, have I committed an office in abasing myself that ye might be exalted? Because I have preached to you the gospel of God freely. I robbed other churches taking wages of them to do you service. Wow. He doesn't mean he literally robbed them. It just meant that he accepted their offering to help him, even though it was because of bulls and goats and all of that every year. Verse 4 says, For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, this way maker, he say, a sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not but a body as thou prepared me. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, No, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. Jesus was there at the beginning. He'll be there at the end. That's why he says I'm the first and the last. I'm the beginning and the end. I'm Alpha and Omega. He was there all the time. But he was manifested in the flesh to take away our sins. He said above when he said sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin, thou wouldest not. Neither had his pleasure therein which are offered by the law. Then said he, lo, I'm at uh, Hebrews 10. I think I was saying 1 Corinthians 10, but that's not where I am yet. Hebrews 10. Then said he, lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first that he may establish the second. By the which will we are sanctified or set apart through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest standing daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man, this way maker, this Jesus, but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Yeah, yeah. And I'm so thankful that he did. There's a scripture that talks about, too, about how he has made a way. There's no temptation no, no. that has come upon us except that's common to man. But he's faithful and he has made a way for us to escape it because he is a way maker. So when we fall into sin, it's like Romans, the first chapter, lets us know we are without excuse. Okay? The way was made, we just didn't take it. But we got to do like Timothy says in 2 Timothy 2 22. Flee youthful lust. Yeah. Run away from them. Joseph did it in Genesis 39 when Potiphar's wife tried to yeah. entice him yeah. and yeah. seduce him. Joseph ran out yeah. the cold and left it with her. Yeah. You got to get away from yeah. sin. Yeah. Don't yeah. play with yeah. sin. Get away yeah. from sin. Jesus did not come to make a way for us, for us to still be in sin, live in sin. God forbid. So he's made a way for us to escape. We've just got to take that way. 
Now we'll go to 1 Corinthians 10. I thank God for Jesus being a way maker. And like I mentioned, he was there all the time when the Israelites were passing through the sea. Verse 1 of 1 Corinthians 10 says, Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And we're all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. Yeah. God provided them water miraculously out of the rock. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that, that rock was Christ. Yeah. Uh huh. He was there all the time in the pillar of fire by night and the cloud by day, the pre-incarnate Christ. In, in uh, Genesis also, chapter 18, he came to Abraham with two angels, the pre-incarnate Christ, yeah, yeah. before he was born. Yeah. He was there, he's been there all the time. And there were times he would manifest himself to people. Before he was born of the Virgin Mary. What a mighty God we serve. And thank God for Jesus being a way maker for us. But with many of them, God was not well pleased. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them. As it is when the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. And that's going on right now, today, some way, anyhow. People sitting down, eating, drinking, ain't thinking about the Lord. Have lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, oh. but denying the power yeah. thereof. Yeah. Yeah. We don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. Neither let us commit fornication, and we know that's sexual immorality outside of marriage and so forth, as some of them committed and fell in one day three and 20,000. Mm -hmm. Neither let us tempt Christ, right. as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of service. Now, some people try to get as close to the world as they can without topping over, going over into the simple thing. That's dangerous. Don't tempt Christ. Uh -huh. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now, all these things happen unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition or instruction upon whom the ends of the world are come. Right. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth, take heed lest he fall. All right. I'm thinking, oh, I, I, I'm not going to be a partaker. I'm just going to be there. Well, if you get weak and you don't take that way of escape, you might fall. That's right. I'm going to repeat it again. Repeat it again. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth, take heed lest he fall. There have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way. He's a what now? He's a way maker. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. The temptation is itself is not a sin. It's the giving in to temptation. The psalm says yield not to temptation for yielding is sin. So when the devil tempt you, you, you better run away. He loves us with an everlasting love. So I thank God for Jesus.
Jesus, the way made us, made a way for us. Didn't have to do it, but he said, prepare me about him. I'll go down, I'll save him. He didn't want us to go to hell. Hell was not prepared for human beings. Hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. You don't have to go to that place. I encourage you today, make Jesus your choice. Be standing knocking at the door of your heart. If you open up and let him come in, he will save you. Just open your heart, open it wide, and let him come in. Because he's made a way for you yes. to escape the punishment. Yes. Yes. A way to escape hell. He's yes. made that way. You just got to take it. I, and, and as you I just have to share. In times like these, Ooh, as the song yes. say, we need a Savior. We do. Yes. This is way maker. In times like these, we need a prayer. Curtis the mountain But be sure. Be very sure. Your anchor holds and it grips that solid rock. And that rock is Jesus. He's 